Hello beautiful people, welcome to A Doctor's View, a show dedicated to medically dissecting your favourite scenes in TV series and movies that we all love to watch. And with me, as always, will be one of the top in the healthcare industry right here in the heart of London and the NHS. Today with me is Dr. Emma Amoafu Mensa, who is going to help me delve deep into this movie, Project Power. If you're ready, buckle up. Let's go. Hello, Dr. Emma. Hello. Can you, can you briefly introduce yourself? Um, thank you for having me. As you've said, my name is Dr. Emma. I'm an NHS doctor currently working as a dermatology registrar in South West London. Okay. Dr. Emma, have you watched the movie Project Power? I haven't and I've heard a lot about it so I'm excited to Okay, do this. okay, I guess you are in for a surprise then. Okay, so that I don't spoil the movie for you, let me just give you a brief synopsis of it. Basically there's an illicit drug on the market and anyone who consumes it for five minutes gets a supernatural power. The drugs react differently with everybody. So we're gonna watch some few clips of some people who took the drug and what it did to them and how you as a medical doctor sees it differently from how most people might look at it okay, okay. Cool. very good let's start with clip number one okay so that's the tablet is it? yeah that's okay. uh. <laughs> yeah that's going literally down the stroke oh my gosh so what it sets him on fire yep that's his ability for five minutes, he's the man on fire, literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, having a look at such a clip, as a doctor, what do you see? I just see burns. Okay. I see damn burns. <laughs> That's like a major burn. Can you, can you tell us a bit on burns? Are there types? Are they great? Yeah, so, um, of course, I think most people would have been burnt at some point in their lives. Emotionally most... too, sorry. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go into that today. Yeah. But yeah, um, most people would have um, had some sort of burn in their lives. The most common thing would be to be in contact with a naked flame or maybe something that was hot. Um, but of course, we need to remember that you can also get burns from other things, like you can get electrical burns and chemical burns as well. Okay. Okay, can you tell us um, what to do when we find ourselves in such a situation for first aid or something? So the very first thing you should do if you've been burnt is of course remove yourself from the dangerous thing that has caused the burn. You know, it sounds really, really simple, but sometimes it does need to be said. The second thing you should do is then rub your, the area that's been burnt under cold water. This should be cool or lukewarm not um, ice cold so you can do this under the tap it's really important to remember that if there are any clothes over the area that's been burnt leave the clothes on okay. don't try and rip them off because that will um, just remove the skin that's underneath the burn oh, okay and what, what possible complications may we get from burn injuries um, yes, yeah, so lots of different ones. The problem with burns is that it interrupts the integrity of the skin. Okay. So we need to think of our skin as a really, really important covering for our bodies. And the burn basically breaks down that covering that God gave us. And so if you think of it that way, then it's really easy to think of some of the problems that burns can cause. Um, firstly, your skin keeps you warm. So once you disrupt that barrier, people can get very cold and the medical term for this is hypothermia. Excellent. Um, another thing is that your skin keeps all the liquid in your body inside. So as we know, our bodies are 70% water and if you lose that outer covering, all that water can start to evaporate. So people can come, become very profoundly dehydrated and that dehydration can then lead to you know, kidney failure because your kidneys need water to function. Another thing is you can get um, infections as well because again the skin pre prevents all the bugs from getting straight into your tissues and causing infections so once you don't have that people can get really unwell from that. Does it affect the lungs in any way? Oh yeah, that's important too. 
So um, obviously whatever's burning will release chemicals and fumes so you know you see smoke is actually usually a black substance and the problem with that is the chemicals that's in the smoke once they're inhaled it can damage the lungs which are very delicate and that's called inhalation injury okay that's that's quite a, a lot of information let me just break them down as simple as possible so if you find yourself burnt run it under cold water for 20 minutes right yeah at least 20 minutes at least 20 minutes get urgent medical attention because you might be dehydrated and going to shock you might get inhalation injury you might get acute renal failure that's with the kidneys or you have infection because you've broken down your first barrier that's the skin excellent excellent wow let's go to the next clip wow. <laughs> that's crazy wow wow that's bulletproof skin right there literally Oh, I like this. This is cool. Wow, is the eye turning red? What's that called medically? That's called conjunctival hemorrhage. Okay. I can see that right there. <laughs> and, what, and then he just gets up and wow. starts fighting. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine? So what did you see? <laughs> I mean, okay, so I'm guessing his superpower is that his skin is like a bulletproof jacket now something like that basically yeah. basically that's cool i'm a dermatologist so i know the skin is the coolest the most important organ in the body i'm so not gonna argue i with like that. this this is cool i'm not gonna argue <laughs> with that <laughs> but i think for me i'm thinking oh gosh so yeah the skin is tough but what about everything underneath it so of course under where he's been shot there's gonna be your skull and your brain so the impact from that shot is definitely causing some type of bleeding <laughs> yeah yeah so what, what are the possible types of um, bleeding to the brain so the medical term for bleeding in the brain is intracranial hemorrhage and of that there are loads of different types and it basically depends on the level at which the bleeding is occurring so what most people won't know is that there are different membranes covering the brain and there are like different layers of jackets if you like that keep the brain safe uh, the most superficial layer is called the dura mater so if you have bleeding on top of that and underneath the skull that's called an extra dural hemorrhage extra dural mm -hmm. then you can have bleeding underneath the dura mater that's called subdural underneath that you've got the arachnoid membrane you can have bleeding underneath that which is subarachnoid and then underneath that you can have bleeding within the brain itself and that's called intracerebral or intraparenchymal okay so extradural subdural subarachnoid and intracerebral bleeds mm. four main types of bleed from blunt head trauma yeah right? what are possible complications and what are we supposed to look out for for instance if I'm being hit by a bat or I fell down I hit my head against something so hard that for a brief moment in time I lost consciousness what should I do mm. so if you're with someone um, who's had blunt trauma to the head and then they um, lose consciousness of course the first thing you should do is get medical attention um, because that person needs some imaging of their head usually a CT scan um, and then take it from there the different types of bleeds that I spoke about previously manifest in different ways um, I suppose one thing I'll talk about is an extra dural hemorrhage sometimes people hit their head and then they pass out but then they wake up and they seem absolutely fine so then they just go about their day this is really dangerous because sometimes you get something called a lucid interval what happens here is that the person gets a little bit of a bleed a slight shaking to the brain and then they recover from that but what they don't know is that the bleeding is continuing so they sort of you know carry on about their day and then eventually all of a sudden that blood accumulates to the point where they pass out again and that's really dangerous so you should always seek medical attention excellently said dr emma excellently said there's that urgency to seek medical attention in such scenarios can you tell us more about possible complications of head injury well the the main concern is that the skull is not a space that can stretch so you don't only have so much space within your skull and it's not very accommodating so once you start to get a bleed within there the brain that's in there has to now move or you know start making space for that bleeding and the problem is the only space that it can go is down and this is something called coning 
where the brain sort of starts to sink into the neck. The reason this is a problem is because the bottom part of the brain that goes into the neck is the part of the brain that controls someone's breathing and you know all the things that keeps them alive and once that bit becomes damaged people can literally just die in front of your eyes. Death, she said, death is one of the huge complications. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, um, we've done a bit of dermatology, it's taking us straight to neurology. Let's see what the TED clip is going to take us to. Cool. Is that the tablet? Yeah, that's the okay, tablet. Okay, he had to, oh, what happened to his fingers? <laughs> it's a long story, you have to watch the movie to know that. <laughs> Well, okay. Also, oh, this is a bit like the Hulk. Exactly. It's kind of like hulking out or Jack and Hyde's <laughs> kind of situation. So, seeing a man just increase in size dramatically as this. As a doctor, what's your view? What do you see? Um, so, we don't really see this medically. People, you know, become very big within seconds. But okay. I suppose the medical example that comes to mind is gigantism. That's very good. Uh, so, literally, giants are a legit thing. It's not just about fairy tales and, um, you know, weird movies. It's actually a legit medical condition. Uh, if you Google gigantism, you'll see lots of um, pictures from people back in the day before we knew how to treat gigantism who are literally twice the size of sometimes you see family photos and then there'll be one person that's literally two times as tall as his parents um, and that they're gi giants that are suffering from gigantism. Can you tell us the causes of gigantism? Yeah, so um, you may or may not know that one of the hormones in our body is literally called growth hormone and that's responsible for making us grow. Now, an excess of growth hormone in a child will cause that child to just keep growing and growing um, to the point where they become literal giants. In adults who have this suffer from this condition, it's slightly different, however, because their bones have already finished growing, so you can't tell an adult to now start regrowing their bones. So they get a condition called acromegaly, and in that condition, different parts of their body just slowly get bigger and bigger, like their hands and their feet. Wow, I, I think I need some more of that. <laughs> I'm just joking, <laughs> by the way. Oh, okay, okay, so what do you do? Who do you need to see if you notice you are having such similar symptoms or you know somebody with similar symptoms? So you need to see a kind of doctor called an endocrinologist and they're the doctors that look after hormones. Um, the problem with acromegaly is that it's really, really slow. So it often takes people years to realize that, hey, you know, my feet are still growing or my hands just look, you know, really big compared to what I expected them to be. Um, and sometimes, you know, the facial features change and sometimes it's actually things inside their body. So people have problems with their heart and things like that. Um, an endocrinologist is uh, the kind of doctor that looks after hormones and they have different treatments that can help to combat the excess of growth hormone. Dermatology, neurology and I think we end up with endocrinology. Thank you so much Dr. Emma for that being on our show. It's, it's been amazing to have you. We mm -hmm. hope and pray that we have you in future shows and um, yeah if you want to follow dr emma right on the screen will be her instagram account right yeah. so that you can go follow her like what she does and spread out the message thank you so much for being with us and before you go a quick question what's the meaning of a lucid interval and what is the medical term for someone bleeding in the eye write all your answers down in the comment section and please do leave a like subscribe and let's help grow this channel my name is dr abe and it's been a pleasure being your host today.